guys, I'm going to show you how to access the hammer spring and adjust the power on your Daystate Air Ranger and Huntsman. Um, a fast, easy way to do it. Um, you don't have to take a whole lot of the gun apart in order to do this. So, anyhow, you need a 1 16th inch Allen wrench and a 3 32nd and a 5 32nd Allen wrench. The 5 32nd is to take the stock bolt out. The 3 32nd is going to be to take the two back screws out back here. There's two Allen head screws that are American back here and the front ones on mine and the other one I did were metric. So, Anyways, I'm going to take that apart. Um, I'm going to zoom the camera up real close so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing here. So I'm going to reposition that and then get a good zoom on it. So just give me a minute. Hopefully the light will be good. Alright, we'll see if we can get a good pick this way. So first we loosen up the two back screws that hold the breech on. And we're not going to be taking the hammer out or anything, so we don't have to worry much about any of that. In the other video I did, you can find out how to do that. So one screw, two screws. you got to get them out because they hold that in, so they got to come out. So I'll just tap on it a little bit, work on them. Then we got two real little 1 16th inch Allen screws. And like I said, these little buggers, you better be careful with. Um, because they're glued in or loctited in or something so I was able to get them out taking my time and using a 1 16th inch wrench make sure it's a good wrench once you get them loose then it's a piece of cake so the last one there's going to be some tension from the spring so the spring pushes back on this cap as you'll see in just a minute So, there's the two screws, and now you can see, see the spring coming right off. There's a little indent for the spring to be held in. That's your safety block. Nothing special with that. Here's the spring, and then inside here, I got that one in there pretty good. This is the bushing that I made. So Usually they just drop out. Here's the bushing that I made. Um, this I made out of a part for a wheel for like the bottom of a couch. This is a plastic part that the metal part sits into, inserts into and holds it in place, the caster. So um, I made this this one out of that. I just turned it down and got it to be the right diameter which is three quarters of an inch and then one sixteenth of an inch and I went with this. The original one was this one here which is a little bit longer. It fits right in there. As you can see when this one was in there the spring is much shorter so I'm not sure how well this is picking it up. Oh, there we go. So anyhow the more tension the spring has, the more power the gun has. Um, I put a shorter spring in, a lighter spring, and I used a little different bushing, and I got much slower uh, feet per second. With this setup, I got, I think it was 550 to 650 feet per second with um, 25.4 gram, I think it was the 500. Say we'll say 550. I don't remember exactly. And the 19 grain um, field target trophies, we're doing like 650 with this spring setup. This spring setup is much softer than this one. So you have two choices. You can either change the bushing, which will adjust the pressure from a big bushing to a little bushing. Oh, gotta put you on hold. Chicken's done. Nope, chicken's not done. So anyhow. You can either change the spring or change the bushing. You can cut corner, you know, coils off the spring. I wasn't a big fan of cutting anything, so my thought was right away to make a different bushing. With this bushing in, 
My particular gun went from 984 feet per second with this setup and a 3600 PSI fill all the way down to a 2700 PSI fill and I'm running at a max of 901, 902 feet per second with this bushing in here. So I wanted to have a little more adjustability so I got a piece of Durlin, just three quarter inch piece of Durlin and I use my table saw so I can put the collar in so it'll fit inside here. So everything's nice and happy that way. And that in turn will fit inside my, my bushing. So everything works out pretty good. And on this setup, it'll be hard for me to show you, but I got one bushing set up real thin, like this one. Then I got another bushing that's a little bit thicker. Another bushing that's a little bit thicker, another little bushing that, you know, and it gets thicker and thicker so I can adjust my power however I want by changing out the bushings. Um, this bushing has a hole in it, which is nice because there's a set screw inside here on the hammer that you can adjust to make the hammer longer or shorter. So therefore you get a longer throw or a shorter throw. So, um, basically that's about it. So there you go. If you want to change the power on your Air Ranger, it don't take very long at all, and it's real simple. Um, I made the collar. I took my table saw with the blade, the blades on the table saw sticking up, and I just take my rod and I set the height, and I just bring my rod in and use the fence to adjust the thing and just turn it as I go around. And around, and around, and around, and eventually you get a nice round collar so it'll fit right inside the spring that way everything's nice and neat so there you go we'll throw it back together real quick we're going to put this bushing back in there i think or actually i think i'm going to try one of my new bushings because i wanted to try some uh kodiaks and i'm not sure if it's going to work out this way for everybody but it seems about 1 16th of an inch gains about 30 feet per second on the feet per second with the 25.4s. So I'm going to put a bushing that's double as thick. That way I can hopefully shoot some barracudas in that 900 to 915 range and I'm hoping they're gonna be real accurate for me. So my barracudas are running about 940. I would like them to run about 9.15 so we're going to try this one we'll see a little bit thicker actually no I'm going to try this one it's just a little bit thicker we'll have to play around with it um, every gun's going to be a little different you know what they like and what they don't like and how they work I did two rangers so far and the one ranger was like 30 feet per second slower than my ranger so I'm sure it had to do with the different um, different spring in it. The bushing was almost identical. There was very little difference in the bushing. Easier to put these back on the end and then put them back in. I knew that going in but I was trying to be slick didn't turn out so slick. So there again, be careful. You gotta get this stuff lined up fairly fairly good. Once you get the one set screw and you don't have to worry about it popping out anymore, but you wanna push this back in when you go to reassemble it so that way all the holes line up. And don't tighten that other set screw down real tight either, so. You want to get them in there so they're snug and then back them up just a little bit. And why we're going to do that is so this will move a little bit. It moves around us a little bit and when we put these in we don't have to worry about alignment problems because if you tighten everything down things aren't going to line up the way they're supposed to. You have to have things just a little bit loose to line up the way they're supposed to. So there we have it. Accessing the hammer spring, 
adjusting the power on the Daystate Air Ranger and the Daystate Huntsman. Without cutting your spring. I don't like the idea of cutting my spring personally. I'm sure I can find springs for it. So I'm not going to go too crazy on tightening this stuff down because I want to do some pranning testing. See where we ended up. This will also, like I said, adjust your fill pressure. The more spring tension you have, the higher fill pressure you can get. Um, so I went from 2700. And there you go. Alright guys, till next time, have fun.